What do we want to learn from this game? Was there anything you wanted to say? How can I do that? Simulations. Thinking about balance. Thinking about making sure the game works. Because in simulation games, balance is important. Games can't go off the rails when there's dynamic elements going on. It's that difference we saw last time between scripted games, every day the same dream, it's going to work all the same the same exact time, whereas a game like this, when there's so much variability, you don't want there to be one way that people can win the game all the time. Where if they choose this, they cheat, or they just, this is, game is broken. Even though there's thousands of options, this is the only way to win this game. That's not a good thing to have in a game. You want to have dynamic balancing back and forth between all the elements. Yeah, is there? Also, I think with the, the, that when you compare the virus or whatever, it has a lot to do with it. Yes. Because you can think of it like your balls is just taking over the world. Yes, you can. Your balls can take over the world. Yes. So, making the game personal, that's something to think about. Okay, who's next? Portal. Talk about Portal. Um, so, pretty much everyone was unanimous on objective. Solve puzzles. Solve puzzles. Get the cake. Um, get, get take. Go glass. Um, use portal gun. Survive. Yes. Um, you can actually get the cake. Cake is a lie. If you, if you get out of the map, you can actually go through it. Well, but you have to. Like, you, you, have to it. So you can't actually walk through it. You can't actually get the cake. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you, you can you see can't stuff. You can definitely get it. Yeah. But you have to. No, flip. You have to break yeah. It. You can break it and move things around. Yes. Theme, science fiction, genre. Uh, yeah. FPS puzzle. First person shooter type of game. It's the camera is in front of you, walking around with you, and puzzles, 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 puzzles everywhere. Yeah. Okay. A resource. Portals. Portals. <laughs> the portal guy. That's very much it. And the companion cube. Yes. Oh, it's so sad. It's so sad. Yeah. <laughs> so, procedures. Shooting uh, things, firing portals. Shoot portals yeah. The rules. Only How are those? Portal at a time. Don't shoot it. You can, or you can only put portals on white or blue. You can start gray. Yes. Um, and then what do people want to learn from this game? How to make portals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what else? I think a really important one Okay. Again, getting back to the cameras. Yes. And and how do we do that efficiently? How do you make something where you can set up infinite recursion, where you can just fall forever? How do you render that without having to completely have cameras looking at cameras, looking at cameras, looking at cameras? The whole way that we're going to approach this is say. How do we get the best possible pictures with the least amount of code? Games have to be interactive like this. You can't say every five, five seconds you get to move. This is a game that's dynamically updated all the time. Okay, physics, level design again. Portal, again, like you, Floria, teaches you how to play very well. It's a game you pick up once at a time. If you haven't watched Brian learn how to play Portal, you should in the, in the forum. It was really awesome. Your eyes opened up. You're like, oh, like, crap. So that is cool. And I think the developers have a lot of uh, tutorials on like how they thought up all these level designs and stuff. Yes. And there is Portal 2. And then there's Portal 2 for education. It's being used in classrooms to teach kids about physics. What? That's yeah. Awesome. And so there's level design. You can make your own levels. You can use it as an educator. There's a whole curriculum <laughs> built around if you hit this ball of plasma, yes, dead. yes, <laughs> but you put this here and you jump there, you have to get the arc right. Here's how things fall together. Here's all the dynamics of what's going on. Now you're thinking in portals. Okay, what else? Rockets, rockets, rockets. <laughs> Woo! Rockets, rockets, rockets. Was that you? Yes. Talk about rockets, rockets, rockets. Well, the objective. <laughs> Actually, uh, I lay lines and it's not clear down how you want to do it. Just don't put the shield. Uh, the thing, it's pretty hard to say, but I would say it's an arcade game. It's like how 
I'm just saying, like, the investment in companies that might rely on Yes. Uh, one resource lives, that seems to be like the only thing that doesn't run out. And, uh, mines and rockets, you have the resources, but you don't really have to manage it. You have the resource. Yep. Uh, procedure. Those are the rules. <laughs> you get hit, you die. You've got a certain number of things, and the, there's the rules with math that go on behind the games. Yes. What do people want to learn? Uh, this is this is one of the games that's a multiplayer game, where there's it really only works if you have other people in the room. There's games like this that you can just have later called like couch games. You invite people over, and there's four or five people sitting on the couch jamming there controllers trying to make things happen. You can play it by yourself, but it's more fun to be playing with other people in the same room with you about this game. Okay, smooth animations. This one, again, focuses a lot on physics. You are watching physics happen on the screen. That can be cool. Other thoughts? Would you recommend people play Rockets, Rockets, Rockets? Maybe. Some of you are like, I don't know. There was, there was one or two comments about Rockets, Rockets, Rockets being poorly developed. Yeah. Yes. It's still a Steam demo game. But that's something cool. You can actually have people play your prototypes and, and fix them and give you comments on them as the game is in development. But, yeah, memory management, doing things like this with so much going on on the screen, how do you do that efficiently is super important for us to figure out. Okay, so, Ticket to Ride. Complete the train routes? Yes. What is the... What is the theme? People said board game, people said western... Trains. In, yes, in the world of board games, there's a whole theme of train games. There's like 90 different games involving trains. <laughs> different ways to put them together. So, that's one of those themes. But it is a, the type of game I wanted you to experience people taking board games and turning them into video games. How does that work? What type of game does that make? The genre? Turn-based strategy. You had to click and let somebody else do stuff different than real time. Not everything was happening at the same time. Resources. Train and, and cards. Trains and cards, yes. So you can draw some cards, place some trains, and then you have to do the events. Only one player can own a route at a time. Make sure the, the rules and procedures and resources are much more important and clearly defined in board game implementations. If you're going to make a physical game that people play with pieces, there's obviously going to be clear resources. If you're going to think about rules and stuff, you have to basically write up a rule sheet. And there was probably a lot more explanation of rules for this game than there was for others. Like Limbo, you said you just started off and played. This one, that would be pretty much impossible. You just sit there, okay, <laughs> click on things until it works. That doesn't work. So some games need large tutorials, like Dota needs a large tutorial. If you never played Dota before and you're like sitting down, you have no idea what's going on. <laughs> it does. That's what I played. I played like it's half an hour. hour long <laughs> yeah. I only played half an hour and I was like, this is not my type of game. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a cool game that a lot of, lot of people play. Okay, cool. And the last one, nobody analyzed this one as a team, but let's talk about it just as a class. Year walk. I saw many more people twitched Year Walk than any other game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could that what be you? because it's at the bottom of the list? It could be, and they're like, I, I forgot to twitch it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. So, what was going on? Find the knife. Find the knife. Kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're supposed to kill yourself. You're supposed to kill a girl. Which one are you supposed to do? I only played it through once. Yeah. I didn't play it through the second time. 
But the second time is the actual ending. Yeah. I know. You played it once, you haven't played it. I know. I, I, was like, I want to, yeah. but then I, I I got busy doing something else. But I need to get back to it. So, yeah. So, completing puzzles. Puzzles seem to be a theme. Maybe it's just because I like puzzle games. But puzzles are common in a lot of games that you see. Hopefully this wasn't a... Well, it was a biased list towards, towards <laughs> games I like. But... <laughs> but I tried to pick ones that were a wide variety of circumstances. The theme, horror, horror winter, creepy, similar to Limbo. What was the genre? Puzzle Adventure, point and click. There's a lot of games that you just point and click. This game, I think, was originally developed for the iPad. And then they said, we have the same code base. We can export it to different people. They can use their mouse. Some things make more sense if you think of it as an iPad game. If you're trying to manipulate the doll. Took yeah. me a long time to do that with my mouse. Yeah, I hate that doll. But if you had a, an iPad in front of you, you'd just be scrolling with your finger and it would spin so quickly. Turning that dial, trying to get the right things to show up in the right order. With an iPad interaction, that makes more sense. So not all games work in all kinds of devices. What else? Resources. House. Yeah, the keys, time again, people, yes, my own time, clues, procedures, walk around, rules, click on things, you have to follow the path, you can't walk if there's no path, you have to go to certain places, and then what do we want to learn from your walk? Animations were cool. 3D objects in a 2D world. Art style, 2.5D, the parallax effects. <laughs> How can you get that to show up and program it? There's a lot of stuff going on. So hopefully you were thinking about what did people do when they sat down to make this game? You're also thinking, what is this game? How do people play it? What makes it fun? But what was going on in the background? Okay, any other thoughts on your walk? Or these games in general. I have a recommendation. Yes. I honestly think that the most beneficial game for you to give everyone is Frog Fractions. I've oh, never spent no. more. Great. Frog <laughs> Fractions. Yeah, like you should honestly check that out. Like Frog <laughs> Fractions. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. It's like about thirty different genres in one game, <laughs> and you never know if you're actually well. I guess you can. Frog Fractions. Okay, that, that sort of gets to what I want to talk about next. You're going to be giving a presentation to the rest of the class about a game you think everyone should play. You're trying to sell a game. You're going to be selling your own game eventually to say, this is the game that everybody should play, but I want you to say, this was the canon that I picked out so that we all had a common set of game experiences. I want to change that for next time. You're going to make an argument why this game should be included in the canon. The way we're going to do that is with that Pachakacha presentation. Pachakacha is a type of presentation. We're going to make a simplified version of it. You're going to have nine slides in your presentation, and they're going to be 20 seconds each. These slides will be automatically advanced. So your talk will be three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There's no going beyond it because the slides will just run. And so it is a talk you have to practice. You have to get everything down beforehand. You have to know exactly what you're going to say. You need to be having the script in your head because it will just go behind you. You can't pause it. You can't wait for it. And it just... It just is what happens when you sit there and talk to somebody in the industry. You're like, hey, I've got this cool idea for a game. Okay, I've got two, two minutes. Tell me about it. You've got to be able to do that. So this is our practice for that so that when we get to the final project and you're doing that in our final presentation, you're more comfortable presenting stuff quickly and making also a trailer for your game. You have to communicate something really quickly in a minute and a half and two minutes to get people to watch a short clip of what's going on and get them excited and interested about that game. So that's why we're doing this kind of presentation in this class. Question? What yeah. What counts as a slide? 
Because you technically could just keep over. 